Now, in terms of the design of this lens, it's very familiar to the 28 and the 35, but there is one big change that a lot of photographers have been asking Typo to get rid of, and they have done that, and that is the infinity lock that is no longer here on the M version of the lens. Now, they removed it for the Z mount and E mount versions and the other mounts, but obviously for the 28 and 35, it was there for the M mount that is gone now on this. Now, this is a 14 aperture blade system inside of this, very similar to the 35 and the 28, close focusing at 0.45 meters, FLE. In terms of performance, it's very similar to the 35 and the 28, but I may say that Typo has even improved this a little bit more. It's very close to the Leica Sumo Lux. As a matter of fact, I had a friend of mine, Leon, take a photo of me outside of Rice Ball, just kind of a compare of the 51.4 Leica Sumo Lux versus this. And while the Leica might be slightly sharper, I have to give uh, Typo credit. They've done a fantastic job in terms of the optics out of this lens. Well corrected, but it's very sharp at 1.4. Extremely sharp at f2. Great color rendition, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Again, design-wise, it looks very similar to the other two, but I think optically inside, they made some uh, definite improvements. Now, in terms of the setup here today, I'm using the Leica SL3. I've got the new Light Lens Lab L to M adapter as well with close focusing, so you can actually adjust that to get closer to your subject, which is great. And yeah, that's pretty much how I've been testing out this lens for the most part. Now, here's the thing, because it's an FLE design, if you want to use, let's say, the Tech Artist adapter, which I have for the Sony E-mount and for the Nikon Z-mount, it may not work correctly. So if you do have that Tech Artist adapter, because the floating element design is inside this, you may not get sharp images at 1.4, so just keep that in mind. But, I mean, outside of that, though, it performs very well on the SL3. Now, with the SL3, I have a full review coming very soon on this camera, but I'll just kind of give you a little bit of an, uh, a hint of what's to come. When you magnify in on the SL3, unfortunately, it does not have the same performance as the SL2 or the original SL in terms of focus peaking. It sort of diminishes and the sharpness isn't as there as you would see on the other uh, camera system. So hopefully, like it does adjust that in the future. But um, with this, it's kind of like, uh, you're just gonna have to eyeball it a little bit and hope for the best, but uh, just a firmware update away. Hopefully like it does address that. Anyway, let's walk around Little India. Let's try some shots with the uh, Samara 51.4 and let's see how it performs. At 1.4, it's actually quite sharp, but when you do stop it down to F2 and beyond that, it is a very sharp, well-corrected lens. Very minimal chromatic aberration, not a lot of green or purple fringing that you're seeing. This is a really well-made lens, guys. Very, very well-made. Definitely better than the 35 1.4, in my personal opinion. I think, as I mentioned, they've done a fantastic job with this. So by the way, this is a new Peak Design backpack. It's the everyday backpack, but the material is different. It's from X-Pack Technology. So this is based off sailcloth and it's recyclable, very durable, water repellent, made in America, by the way. And this is uh, just launched today, August 20th, but this is a really nice backpack. And uh, big thanks to Peak Design for sending this out my way to try it out, but uh, I'm liking it. What do you guys think of the color? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, back to taking more photos. Now, in terms of the usability on this lens, the focusing ring is very smooth. Now, the tab on the bottom of it, it's very easy to maneuver. So again, no infinity lock, which is great. The aperture ring, again, this is a demo lens. So kind of pre-production. I wish it was a little bit more clicky, but I mean, as it is right now, there's a click, but it is very subtle. One thing I did notice, and it, it's just something that stood out to me, the orange dots seem to be a little bit more pronounced depth of field scale. Now, this is something, of course, taken from the Alpha Kearns lenses of years past. And on the 35 and the 28, they were there, but they're a little bit more subdued. It looks a little bit brighter here on this lens. Again, could be pre-production, but it's something that I noticed. Outside of that though, it does perform very similar in terms of the feel as the 28 and the 35 Samara lenses. So overall thoughts on this lens, as you've been seeing through some of the sample images here, I mean, really good colors, as I mentioned earlier, it's very sharp at 1.4, which is nice. Uh, beautiful bokeh, beautiful fall off. It's nice and creamy and it's smooth. And I think Typo's done a great job with this lens overall. Um, now, this is a demo lens, of course. We'll be in shops very soon, but I'm very impressed with it. And I think the without that infinity lock, it makes it a lot easier to use versus I know a lot of people complained about that. It didn't really bother me so much, but now not having it, I understand why people didn't like it as much. If you're going to use this on the rangefinder, obviously 0.45 means you're going to have to use live view. But when you're using, let's say, on the SL3 or SL2 or SL2S, for example, 
it's going to be fine. You're going to get close focus and you're going to get some really good images out of it as well. But uh, I guess we would say the more challenging thing on the SL3 is the EVF when you're magnified in. That's something you just have to eyeball a little bit. But as I mentioned, hopefully they fix that in an update. But uh, that's kind of it on the lens overall. You're seeing the performance, the chromatic aberration, the well-controlledness of the lens. I'm pleasantly surprised with it. And I think for people that maybe can't afford a Leica Sumalux right now, and you're looking for a very good 51.4 as a third-party option, I think Typo has done a great job with this. And as a matter of fact, I would argue to say that from the 35 to the 28 and now the 50, they've been improving these lenses on each variation. And I think the 50 may be the best one yet, in my personal opinion, in terms of the 1.4 Samara line. The Eureka is a very different ball game. Love that lens, love the rendering out of it, but more of a classical kind of vintage look, but sharper at F2. This is gonna give you a good modern performance overall for a lot of shooters out there. So guys, those are my thoughts here on the Samara 51.4. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're looking to pick this up, any questions you have, I'll try to answer those for you. And uh, yeah, like, follow, subscribe, and I will chat to you guys very, very soon. Take care.